welcome to this session entitled, What's the Story with Interpersonal Neurobiology? Um, as Paula mentioned, this is part lecture, part participatory theater in the sense that we get to play with reality here. Uh, the agenda for this session will be one, my short introduction, which is happening right now. Two, a game, which will come next. Three, a semi-academic lecture on the topic of interpersonal neurobiology, which will ask you all to be very good students of your cringe and curiosity responses. And then part four will be a conversation between all of us, um, me included, about how we may want to replay the, le the lecture to challenge the narrative, specifically the way that power is moving through the story. Um, and then lastly, five, we will do a replay of the lecture um, reimagined by us. So, oh, okay, welcome, Sean Wan. I was just explaining the, the um, oh, did you raise your hand? <laughs> The tropical background it's like anything goes so yeah okay. no worries yeah all right um, so Sean Juan do you have a question I'm gonna guess that they or maybe it was an accident oh, okay <laughs> um thank you Paula though um no yeah but I'm not gonna recap for you Sean Juan so you're gonna have to just catch up um so now is the moment when you can choose to stay or go of course, you can stay or go. You can go whenever you want. But I like to remind people that they have choices because we live in a world that sometimes make it seem, makes it seem like we don't. So choice. Choice to stay, choice to go. Happy with your staying, whoever stays. Okay. So now it's time for the game. And it, you were warned that this was participatory. So if you are here and you have your camera off, I would love if you could please turn it on because it will be required for this game. Which again, you don't have to play. And we'll leave Iati alone. Um, see if they want to join the game. Okay, so the game is just called Yes, Let's. And it will really only be fun if we all participate. Um, so the rule is, there's just one rule, it's very simple, that I or any one of you will just say the words, hey everyone, let's, and then fill in the blank. So, um, um, oh, I just heard my echo. Um, okay, so hey everyone, yes, let's, and then give an idea of something that we can all do together here on Zoom. Um, so that could be, it doesn't have to be something big, Interesting. I am the one admitting people here. Um, that's because you're on. Um, you're a co-host to be able to share your screen if you would okay, like to. Um, yeah, no, that's great. I can. I can take care of that. You can just. Okay. Ignore. Okay. Cool. Lovely. We're getting the tech all. And I put up. hey everyone yes let as the prompt in yes. the chat. So if you exactly. Can. That's the prompt. So it can be anything. It doesn't have to be big. It can be small. Um, but. Basically, I'll start us off, and if someone doesn't interrupt me, we'll just keep doing what I said to do forever and ever. So, you know, it kind of like relies on um, all of us moving things along. So, um, does everyone understand or any further explanation desired? Yes? Okay. Maybe you could give an example. Yeah, so an example, thank you, would be um, like, let's take a nap, or let's do a silent scream or let's like, hey everyone, let's uh, jump up and down. Hey everyone, let's pretend to take a sip of water. So anything like that, yeah? So kind of like Simon says, except you're making the suggestion. Sure. So, so, okay, let's start out. Hey everyone, let's give ourselves a face massage. Yes, let's. <laughs> Thank you, Paula, for remembering that part. Mm -hmm. Hey, everyone, let's unmute ourselves. Oh, thank you, Sean. One really needed you. 
Oh, thank you. Hey everyone, let's see if we can coordinate clapping all at the same time. One single clap. On go. One, two, three, go. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think we did it. It was. You want to try it one more time? Sure. Hey, everyone. Let's all try to do one singular class at a time. On go. Yes, let's. Three. Oh, wait. Sorry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we got worse somehow. <laughs> Okay, hey everyone, let's do a singular clap all at the same time. One, <laughs> two, go. I think that's the distance between us. Yeah, that is. Wow. Wow. We, we could clock it. <laughs> that's extremely cool. <laughs> hey everyone, let's uh, give each other a namaste uh, salute. No. Oh. Like this. Oh. And like this. So putting our hands to one side and like touching our palms to the sides of our boxes wow. as if we were giving each other a salute sideways. Yes, let's. Yes, okay. let's. One more, yes, one more time. <laughs> namaste. And then namaste. Hi. <laughs> Hey everyone, um, do we all want to try to take a breath at the same time? Yes. Yes, yes. yes but only if you want to. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> One, two, three. Awesome. <laughs> that was really nice. Hey everyone. Okay. Oh, were you gonna go? I can't hear. I can't hear you, can't hear you Ayadi. If you can't, if you can't activate your microphone, you can type in the chat. I think he might be chat typing. Okay, in. I'll do one in the meantime. Okay. Hey everyone, let's act like we're drunk with power. <laughs> Ooh. 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 <laughs> How do you smoke a cigar? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do let's get one last one. Yes, I yes, let's. What's the suggestion? Hey everyone, let's stretch. Yes, let's. Yes, let's. Let. Okay. Well, that concludes uh, part two of our time together. Um. So now, uh. We're going to move on to part three, which is the performance, the lecture performance. Um, I hope we get Yati back. It was so nice to see your face. Welcome, welcome back anytime. Um, Before so, we continue, would you like everyone to have their microphone on or off? Well, that's a very good point. So for this round, your microphones are gonna be off. off. Um, but I will want, people to be able, if people can control their own microphones, that would be splendid. So just, you're gonna be silent this round and that's important, you know, respect. Um, so we're gonna, I'm gonna invite you to view this lecture as Augusto Boal might approach it as an opportunity to notice how power is performed. <laughs> So in this round of the lecture, you'll be asked to remain silent. 
Um, but don't, you know, try not to lose yourself in it. Notice your thoughts and feelings. And you may just be interested, but you're a viewer um, and you are going to be asked to have a critical voice. So uh, when this lecture is performed again in part five, you won't have to remain silent. You'll be asked to interrupt the flow. So pay attention to the story of interpersonal neurobiology. This is when I take my break. So hold tight, the lecture will begin shortly. I'm gonna go get some water. <laughs> okay. Hi there. Excuse me. Hi there. My name is Dr. Dorr. Um, and I'm going to be uh, the keynote speaker today at this year's Cutting Edge Neuro Everything conference. Um, I'm looking forward to sharing some of the foundational research in this growing field of interpersonal neurobiology. And um, I hope that to offer this audience of healing professionals some new clinical insights to take back to your offices. Um, so I'm going to share my screen now. Excuse me. Can y'all see my safari window there? Okay, great. Yes, we can. Okay. So any story about the mind and psychological healing must begin with Freud. As most of us know, his discovery of the unconscious revolutionized modern man's image of himself and gave rise to the psychoanalytic process. Um, but his talking cure uh, was missing something um, important, which we will learn more about in a moment. So whereas psychoanalysis was originally uh, given in Freud's classical turn, turn your back to the client position, um, which he did so that the client wouldn't be interpreting his face too much, you know, that might interfere in the process. Um, some of his uh, contemporaries started observing children at play. And um, some members of the psychoanalytic community started talking about maybe the existence of an intersubjective field. They suggested that the relationship between therapist and client itself may be an important part of the healing process. At first, it seemed crazy, but you know, this has now been supported by countless empirical studies. Sir John Bowlby, excuse me, um, whose mother sent him away to boarding school as a child, continued, continued this trend of observing children, which led him to the landmark discovery of attachment styles. But no further clinical insights would arrive until the decade of the brain a giant leap forward for mankind, generously funded in the 1990s by President George W. Bush. By the 2000s, contemporary imaging had proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that the human brain is social by nature and by nurture. This idea was pioneered by Dr. Alan Shore, who laid the groundwork for this growing field of interpersonal neurobiology. He proposed that attachment communications are critical to the development of right brain neuro neurobiological systems that form the functional origins of the bodily based implicit self. The bodily based implicit self. I know it sounds a bit woo, but stay with me. Science to the rescue. Shore's research focused on right brain development, which is dominant during the first three years of life. It is only with the acquisition of language that learning starts to shift to the left hemisphere. 
What we learn through the right brain is implicit, body-based, intuitive, emotional, and holistic. The science reveals that these qualities, which may seem secondary or even feminine, turn out to be central. Research shows that early right brain relationships have a material impact. For example, the amygdala, which is the fear center of the brain, is fully mature at birth, while the right orbitomedial frontal cortex, which will help us understand emotions expressed by others throughout lifespan, is not. The OFC learns how well we are able to regulate anxiety with the help of our caregivers. This implicit learning happens as a dialectic between two body and brain systems. The infant projects their right brain amygdala intensities into the field of the relationship. The caregiver metabolizes this intensity through their fully mature parasympath parasympathetic nervous system and sends it back as a bite-sized chunk through modulation of voice, face, and body. It is now accepted that the nonverbal pre-rational stream of expression that binds the infant to its parent continues throughout life to be a primary medium of intuitively felt affective relational communication. The clinical significance of this discovery is profound. According to Dr. Shore, it is through these tactile, nonverbal, emotional transmissions shared face-to-face -face between two right brains communicating at ultra-rapid rates that clinicians can help people heal attachment relationships. Oops, excuse me. Do, do, do. There is now agreement that the synchronous shared social interactions are the foundation of the human experience. Overviewing current multi-brain neuroimaging and hyperscanning data, researchers assert that among all forms of interbrain communications, the communication of emotion is the most important process for mental health. Bearing all this in mind, I would like to suggest that across disciplines, we are witnessing a paradigm shift from a one-person intrapsychic to a two-person relational psychology, a shift in perspective from within a brain to an intersubjective relationship between brains. Thus, at the most fundamental level, the intersubjective work of a helping professional is not defined by what the helping professional does for the patient, or says to the patient, a left brain focus. Rather, the key mechanism is how to be with the patient, especially during affectively stressful moments, which is a right brain focus. In the 110 years since Freud first published his project for a scientific psychology, we've concluded that Freud's talking cure may be better understood as a communication cure. In closing, I'd like to quote Alan Shore, who wrote in 2022 that at present, functional neuroimaging is on the brink of a paradigm shift, quantifying the brain interactions between individuals as they transcend the boundary of the skull. And Louis Casalino summarizes that the consistent message of, research, of recent research is that minds are always embodied and cultured and embedded within the context of relationships. This is an incredibly exciting time for the growing field of interpersonal neurobiology and the healing professions. And there are now 80 books in the Norton series on interpersonal neurobiology. And our hope is to transform not only the field, but the world with these discoveries. Thank you for being with me. Here's a list of works cited and quoted. Thank you very much. Oh, no. Hi. Okay. How is that for you? Oh, oh, God. Wait, stop. Okay. How is that for you? Boring. Good. Good. You liked it. Hi. Um, if you're not sure what you want to say, but you want to put it in the chat, you are welcome to do that. Thank you for that. Um, let me see here. So um, I'll say yeah. something. Okay, please. I've, yeah, please. I've learned uh, about interpersonal neurobiology. And in fact, I, I follow some, some neurobiologists who 
uh, who uh, use this in their praxis. Yeah. And in their practice, their medical practice. Mm -hmm. um, um, without context, it was uh, kind of uh, like having a lecture out of the blue when you're not mentally prepared for it or even enthused about the song, I think. Mm -hmm. So that's that's how it landed for me. I don't know how it landed for anyone else, but it was uh, one-sided communication. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm curious if anything felt like uh, if I'm curious if you related to anything about it. Like, did you relate to the man? Did you relate to the material? Like, what do you feel personally like is meaningful to you from that lecture? Or if you just have anything else you want to share about it spontaneously. It's, uh, yeah, it's just funny um, how science now validates that we are influenced by our relationships. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I find the most funny about it, you know? Like, um what does it mean? Like, what does it mean for us that science now validates the fact that relationships are meaningful? And of course, this isn't to say, I think there's, uh, the invitation here too, isn't to say, you know, just like expletive them. It's, um, it's to be like, this is complex. Like there's something being offered here, but I personally, from the green room, sitting there listening and being like, I don't know if I like the way, like, I guess I just want it to be a little more revolutionary, you know? So I don't know if we can do something that would sort of like shake things up a little bit, like come back to the lecture. So basically what our opportunity is here and we don't have very much time, unfortunately. Um, you know, I wonder it, if there are some questions we can ask. Well, we have to do the performance though. But we, yeah, we can, we can, I, okay. Let me set up the next thing and then we'll, we'll decide together what we want to do with our remaining time. Um, so the opportunity is to replay the lecture. So doodle come back, do the same thing. Um, it could be that someone wants to interrupt and say something. It could be that someone even wants to just start the lecture differently. And then like the scientists can just be like doing slides. Like someone can become the protagonist and the, the scientist can just become like a button pusher. You know? um, so we have options and um, we have 10 minutes. I guess we kind of can have 15 minutes. Um, so we have like five minutes to figure it out. Maybe. Um, I'm going to suggest something because ours is the last session in this room okay. for the night. So okay. if you want, we could go until the, um, you know, half. So we're, we're slated to go until a quarter past the hour. We can we can go until half past the hour. We did start a little late due to well some logistical stuff. So. Okay, well, I don't know what people's schedules are. I know we have different time zones here. Mm -hmm. That's so, why I mentioned it. Would you like to do that? Or would you like to just stick to the schedule we have? I think what I would like to do is ask if people understand the premise real quick. I'm, I'm kind of confused. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So the idea is that um, basically, it, this is based in a way on Augusto Ball, Ball's forum theater, which would be like a play, a, a scene would be performed. And in this case, it was a lecture that was performed. And then the people that were watching, the spect actors, they're spectators, but they're also going to play an active role, would talk a little bit about it and then decide how they want to intervene. Um, so they would step into the scene and, and change something about the way that it happened. So the question for us now is, 
I guess one, do we find what the scientists told us to be meaningful? So I can share a little bit about my perspective. I was actually very hooked by the inquiries the scientists post in the beginning, but English is my second language. So when it gets to the middle and then the language became, it, it just inaccessible to me. And so I would, if we're doing this thing again, I would appreciate someone to translate the academic jumbo um, into a language that I can understand. That's great. That's great. That's a fantastic intervention possible. I'm like, and I awesome. have a suggestion for that. If your language isn't English and you wanted to follow along as the person was speaking, you could go to your more button at the bottom of the, of the screen and then choose the captions option and then open full transcript. Because we set the language to English, the AI would have picked up um, Megan or the presenter's uh, presentation and then you can read through it or listen and read at the same time. So I can also send you the presentation if you if you want to have it. Um, but I think regardless of whether or not you understood it, the point that you're making is really important because even if it wasn't a second language, I think there's probably a lot that's being said there that doesn't mean anything to us, to a lot of people. So that's a great suggestion. So we could... Um, we could just kind of like really run through the beginning of it really, really fast, kind of like fast forward into the lecture. And then you could say, hey, can you just say that a little bit more simply? Like, can you just speak to me in layman's terms or something? And then the scientist. Right. Right. Yeah, that sounds great. Okay. Does anyone else have a suggestion or should we go with that? Um, I have the transcript right in front of me. I could pick up something or you could pick up something because it's available to you too and say, you said this, what did you mean? Or did you really mean this? You could, we could do the inquiry with the transcript as you, as it came through the first time. That's true. I think it would be more interesting to do it in the scene though. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Sean Juan, did you have something? Yeah. Can I uh, interrupt when I feel like there are things the presenter is saying that have uninterrogated bias in them? Yes. Do you, are you, do you want to, so why don't we, this is good. I think actually we should just do an onslaught, right? So everyone can, <laughs> can have a voice. Sean Juan, you do that. We'll see the 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 scientists will just try to keep going so we get to then the technical jargon where then brooke can be like hey yeah okay is there anyone else that had a mo you know we can just run it and if there's a moment when you want to interrupt just go for it you know okay it, it'll probably go off the rails but i think that it'll put us at a good timing just a little bit past the hour and um yeah. Okay. Does everyone feel good about this? Lyndon, are you on board? How are you feeling? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I um I think I just like I was uncomfortable and I just so I couldn't really like fully um listen. You know what I mean? I was like, I'm so I'm so unsure of what's happening right now mm -hmm. that I'm just like I'm like, at one point, you know, the brain did a cool thing and I was like, okay. And then at another point they were talking about how to be, they said how to be with the patient. And I was like, that, that makes me feel pleasant about just thinking about relating to people and how to be with them in the right way. But like, other than that, I don't think I could really hear anything. I don't know if that's weird, but yeah. That's, that's perfectly valid. Yeah. Part, has part to do with the circumstance that I've put you in. And yeah, like, maybe. <laughs> what's going on? I'm sorry. And I was like, it's just funny. Timing in the world and everything. I'm just like, what's happening right now? But yeah. I um, mean, the world doesn't make sense. So we may as well practice. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
Sorry, y'all. I'm just having some anxiety tonight, but it's no, okay. <laughs> it's totally welcome here. I'm so glad you're here. And awesome. what, whatever, you know, you can even say that if you want Thanks. to. Thanks. Thanks for letting me. Yeah. <laughs> what do I do with my anxiety? Yeah. <laughs> you want to know how to stop feeling anxious. I'm like, what's going on? Just, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Okay. That's okay. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, no rush, really. We can stay here all night. Um, okay. I'm gonna go back. Uh, I'm gonna go back there, and I'll bring that, that guy out. Okay. I'll be right back. In the meantime, if someone wants to breathe in for four and out for six, that um, pranayama breath is really good for anxiety. Hello. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> Hi. Hi, everyone. My name is Dr. Dor. <clears throat> Thank you so much for inviting me to be your keynote speaker at this year's Cutting Edge Neuro Everything Conference. Dr. Dor, for... I'm sorry. Could you oh. spell your name? I want to take notes every time. Please, please spell your name. Yes. It's a D-R- dr d dr dot space uh -huh. d o o r <laughs> yeah. okay thank you or yeah thank you for that question thank you uh -huh. yeah uh -huh. you can quote me on anything i will and, I don't and know where are you... your credentials from doctor <laughs> where did you get your doctorate all over the place <laughs> amazing we can see that on your yeah. wall yeah the that's the the benefit of zooming in is you've got your credentials on the wall, you know. <laughs> so, well, um. Anyway, I know you all want to hear um what I have to offer, which is a lot. So, um, great. Let me share my screen. Okay. Actually, let me not share my screen. Hold on. I'm really professional, I swear. Okay, here we go. Can you all see my screen? Yeah. Okay, fantastic. So really vocal crowd tonight, that's fun. Um, okay, all right, so Freud, right? <laughs> Sorry. As most of us know, his discovery of the unconscious revolutionized modern man's image of himself and gave rise to the psychoanalytic process. Uh, excuse me, Dr. Doyle, what do you mean by discovery? Did uh, the unconscious not exist before Freud? Right. Well, in this image, it's like he's on the boat. And he... And, he... and he's going to oh, crash okay. into no. that... He's going to no. crash into that iceberg. Yeah. And why does the iceberg have writing on it? because i'm in control of this presentation okay <laughs> um the discovery of uh of the unconscious though i mean do you know who discovered it well i, I think people had an innate sense of it before uh mr freud made a, a claim to talk about it it's a valid point he put a name to it which is really important that allowed us to be like to point at it and say that so okay thank you yes and he had a method he had a psychoanalytic method that he invented he it was the talking cure um so we all really have a lot uh that we need to um honor about freud uh, but he wasn't all he didn't have it all figured out because um at some point a uh, psychoanalyst started observing children um, and they started talking about the existence of an intersubjective field. So more discoveries by this group of highly intelligent uh, Western minds 
um, they suggested that the relationship between therapist and client itself may be an important part of the healing process. Um, and this has been supported by countless empirical studies. Uh, Next, please. What do they need to heal? Oh, sorry, what? What are they healing? You said it's an important part of the healing process. What are they healing? Who's sick? Mm, well, that's a really good question. Yeah, you know, healing mental and emotional distress, you know? People are... Um, People are messed up. They're messed up by their parents, mostly. And that would be everyone? Because I, no. I had a happy childhood. That's good. No, yeah, no. I mean, you may not need to see a therapist. Yeah, so. Are you no, suggesting yeah. everyone sees a therapist? Most people do. Most people do need it, yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, um, which is good for me, but you didn't need to <laughs> <laughs> anyways i have a lot more to share why don't i skip ahead a little bit to the decade of the brain my god thank you george w bush for all that money um and uh what we love in science is proof so you know people debate 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 but nature is it nature is it nurture but it's both believe it or not. And, but it, it wouldn't, have, without all the money, we wouldn't have known. We wouldn't have known. So um, this is Dr. Alan Shore, who laid the groundwork for this growing field of interpersonal neurobiology. And he proposed that attachment communications are critical to the development of right brain neurobiological systems that form the functional origins of the bodily-based implicit self the bodily based implicit self. Is that a hand or did I not see a hand? Um, Dr. <laughs> Dr. Dor, could you just, could you just use everyday language to mm, paraphrase yeah. what you just said? Mm. Mm. Okay. Okay. Here. okay, so, okay, he, I'm gonna break it down. Let me just take some time with this, hold on. He proposed that attachment communications are critical to the development of right brain neurobiological systems that form the functional origins of the bodily based implicit self. You know, there's so many parts to this. It's just, it's Can we start uh, with the right brain? Why the right brain and not the left brain? Right. So the right brain, you see it here. Mm -hmm. All of these skills are being developed in the right brain. This is only, um, like only in the right brain. I thought they were attached. Don't they communicate? Well, this is the interesting thing, um, Paula. This is the interesting thing is that uh, the right brain is just dominant actually between the ages of one and three. So a lot of development is happening in the right brain when you are between the ages of one and three. And, and the brain development that's happening has to do with relationships. So um, the amygdala here, okay. The amygdala here is the fear center of your brain. That's the part that goes, <laughs> you know? And um, that grows its, its development, its connection, neural connection to the orbitofrontal cortex, which is involved in remembering how well, how good you are at um, regulating your anxiety. And your and left brain is not? Your left brain, it's all, you know, it's, oh, there's, oh. Someone just entered the waiting room. Um, in right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, your left brain is, it, you know, the, but the point is that between the ages of one and three, it really is developing, you're developing these skills on the right side, which are implicit and they're body-based and they're intuitive. And then once you begin learning language, the activity starts to shift over to the left hemisphere. So they are connected. There are brain structures that they move back and forth between the two. The focus on the right brain is really just, you know, my brand of neuroscience. That's my brand. So, that's, so half a brain at a time. 
That's how I sell books. But there is truth to it. There is truth. So I'll come out and tell you, it's the science of the brain, half of us don't even know what we're talking about. I'll come out and tell you. Are you, which half are you in? <laughs> the right brain half. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. The child? Is the child right or left brain? Uh, the, well, like I said, between the years, uh, the ages of one to three, it's primarily right brain development that's happening. Mm -hmm. And after that, it's always like the left. Do they switch? No, 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 no. It moves. It moves all around. Yeah. There's, there's a new theory they say called network neuroscience, default mode, net mode network and stuff like that. But that's not my, that's not how I sell books. So I'm not, that's not here in my presentation. So you don't, uh -huh. you don't care to understand the other uh, approaches and theories? You guys are mean. <laughs> Sorry. I'm gonna put Just my curious. Dog. Um, legitimate question. Is there anything no. here that you might that you care about? Do you care about these, anything? I mean, that I have all these to images say? actually. I would love if you could talk through like what's going on. Like they're very impressive. Um, like these, yeah, like this one. Can this you one? just describe? Yeah, what what you're an image, what's going you're a visual, on? You're a visual learner. I, uh, you, well, you could say that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. So. This is a, a top-down, right lateralized interbrain synchronization of a spontaneous bidirectional nonverbal communication. Could you could you explain what that means? Like, there it's like psycho, psych like they're psychically communicating. They're nonverbally communicating. They're implicitly communicating. It's beneath your conscious awareness. It's faster than. So oh, is okay. it their brains are are, are like? resonating they're like vibrating yeah. are they yeah. vibing together they are they're vibing this is an image of vibing yeah cool i'm gonna the right brain vibe I, really, with the left I need things to be more complicated i'm sorry like i don't know what my job is going to be if you continue to reduce my profession to just conversations like this well uh isn't some famous scientist like richard Feynman or something said like the mark of an expert is if you can explain your uh, science to a five-year-old is that done with the right brain through this uh, substrate of dynamic unconscious i am communicating to your five-year-old self right now this whole time implicitly hmm. <laughs> but I, I feel like you could be more more caring if you're doing that yeah i know that's what my kids say and what would a five-year-old think about this why would they why would they want to know about this Oh, I don't know. Why would you... the mom or the dad want to know about this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. Are you a parent? I am actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you um, do you think this is valuable for your your relationships with your children? Well, you know, I'd I'd really like to for you to connect the dots. How, how do you think the parents would be able to make use of this information? Mm -hmm. I see. Well, that'll be the, that'll be the title of my next book. Oh. Thank you for that. You know, Daniel J. Siegel has a really good book called Aware. I think he discussed that. Maybe reference him? Mm. I do know Daniel. Yeah, it's true. Daniel's He's a really nice guy. I've met him before. Awesome. He seems like a really nice guy. And I personally love Alan Shore and I personally love this work. Um, and I also think it's for us. It is for us. So. I'm sorry. I'm so confused with what's going on right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to I'm going to close. I'm going to um return to the other side. Hold on. I like well, I isn't that an interesting I guess this is all a joke, but I'm I'm just like is what is um I don't know. I I I was like I thought I I, I don't know. I thought I was um I just thought of, I don't sorry y'all I thought I was like yeah. learning that's trying to learn something I'm like what what is happening right now <laughs> I'm sorry I'm sorry y'all no no, no. Don't apologize. 
please don't apologize. This is just an experiment um, in learning and maybe a failed experiment in learning. Um, I think like I really do value this research. And yes, Daniel Siegel has written books that are accessible to parents. I did that um, to wind you up. I, it was it was meant as the intervention, like breaking the fourth wall. Totally interventional. Totally, it was not right, meant. It worked. It worked. Um, so, yeah, the experiment was to see whether or not it's it's possible to convey information and also critically look at it at the same time. But that's like a pretty high bar. That's a lot to ask, and this may be the only time it ever happens. <laughs> um, it totally makes sense to be confused. Yeah, I, I just like get so much anxiety trying to talk to people, or even like being on camera, and then I'm just like, what is going on right now? So I'm sorry. Um, oh, if I'm, I'm sorry. If I'm like doing something wrong, I don't know. Um, no. Yeah. <laughs> like, <what? laughs> yeah. Does anyone else in this room want to like this is almost like a like bar them. theater it, it's like it's like a satirical theater where the okay. audience is poking fun at the, the players um mm -hmm. or just making making social commentary on what's oh, happening awesome. on stage um and it's almost like i mean this is a, how i experience it. it's almost as if you've allowed us you've sort of given us this permission to say what's in our thoughts at the same time that you're presenting so you're presenting the first time none of us said anything we you know we respected the silence mm -hmm. but still we had these thoughts in our head about well, what's going on what are they saying oh i like this this book or oh, this this seems like something i've read oh i remember this from biology class whatever whatever's yeah. going on in our our brains at the same time or you know something like oh this is so boring i want to snooze while while this is on whatever is going through your brain and then but in the second iteration, you've given us permission to just intervene with what's going on in our brain. And yeah. so, you know, and so then that's feedback. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. That's, that's feedback <laughs> yeah. for, uh, for, uh, for Dr. Door <laughs> <sighs> as to, you know, what people really thought about the presentation. So, yeah. <laughs> this is like a meta performance. <laughs> Yeah, this is wild. I think I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, celebrity crush. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, I feel like I'm also just taking up a bunch of space. But no, I um, uh, sorry. No, this is great. This is great that you're saying how you, how you feel. <laughs> yeah. Like I just got joined in this one, and like I I was looking through different times and things, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna jump in. Um, but my day has been like I I don't know. Um. I'm just I'm having like a grief day I guess and so it just was like a weird thing to jump in on I think but um yeah it's fine <laughs> yeah yeah I don't know what, sorry I mean um, nice. it's good for the parasympathetic yeah. nervous system <laughs> yeah that's so true it's, it's uh, yeah. just a reference a nod to your presentation is good for the parasympathetic nervous system laughter <laughs> so, yeah. and breathing and gargling by the way oh yeah I just I'm like you know, I'm just talking to these random people I don't know, saying weird things and just living and sitting in my friend's bed. Like, I don't know. It's yeah. fucking awesome. But yeah, y'all are awesome. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah. I, I, mean, the I, next... mm. I hope I wasn't like too combative. <laughs> I, mean, I feel like I'm always, when I have the chance to like step in, I feel very mischievous. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope that didn't... Uh, add no, to the it. sense of chaos <laughs> no no I think it's kind of beautiful that the whole thing like because I didn't know how this would go at all I've never done this before um it literally was an idea I had on an airplane which <laughs> others maybe don't do ideas that you have on airplanes um but I think like I like that um I like that it broke like at some point it broke and I'm not really an actor. Like I'm not a good actor. So I was just doing my best. Um, no, you were doing great. 
Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I also struggle with anxiety. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was actually gonna think about making a joke. My friend makes this tincture and she wrote on it, it's for disorganized attachment. She was like, I have just the thing for you. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna go, this recording is going on the internet or something. I don't know. Um, anyways, shout out. Um Bay Area Bay Herbalist Dasha. Okay. Um yeah, so there is there is a lot to learn from interpersonal neurobiology, and I'm I would be happy to also like send um, like the presentation. I don't know, I don't know how important it is to like know about the brain structures necessarily, but I think the message is just that relationships can be healing, and you know, like that's. That's it. <laughs> like relationships oh, can hurt us a lot and they can also heal us. And it's how do we learn to be with each other? Um, yeah. And like earn, earn the Because I think, yeah, there's, there's a lot to say about that on a, on a real genuine and authentic level. So, so may, I, may I share something? Yes, um, yes please. So something that, stuck out for me during the performance was when um the spectators were asking Dr. Dor a lot of questions and I think one question was centered on what's the purpose of all of this information why are you telling you this and I and Dr. Dor's reply was I don't know I don't care I'm just here to tell you this this is what it is um, but then just now you put it so beautifully that this talk is really just about letting people know that relationship itself can be healing. Mm -hmm. And 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 also me just and it's hearing that and reflecting on the performance part. And then I would just wonder why did how did the message get lost in there? Mm -hmm. why did it become unclear for people what all those information is about when it should be something that's very clear yeah that is epic thank you and I go back to what was said before that there is this almost this need to validate everything that we do or or present that we have to have some scientific proof <laughs> that is good for us before we allow ourselves to enjoy it mm -hmm. and allow it to, to derive meaning in our lives, mm -hmm. you know? Totally. Well, and I think that's the other thing, and it's hard to incorporate this critique into it uh, in this format, but, you know, like, the, I think the reason actually what motivated me to do this is just, like, how much cultural knowledge has been denigrated um, in service of Western ways of knowing um and I find that infuriating you know and I in the best case scenario that would have that would have come across through this which I don't know if it did but but on some level like what you're reflecting Brooke is just like that's it <laughs> I'm really glad you were here uh, just um it's 20 after the hour and we have uh, if you'd like to take 10 more minutes to come to talk about uh, relationships and why it's important or this type of theater of the absurd and mm -hmm. and you know the breaking the fourth wall we can take another 10 minutes because we were we were late starting yeah. um, um, but before we do that I just wanted to point your attention to what I put into the chat so there's information mm -hmm. about tomorrow's session for the conference and um, there is a community forum if you want to join in with the people the hosts the speakers as well. So there's a link there for Hilo. Um, and if you want to know more about the uh, about the contributors like Megan, um, there's uh, more information about about them in that second link. Also, we would love to get your feedback on the feedback form. So please feel free to um, click on that link, save that link, and uh, and then just give us some feedback. If not after the session, maybe throughout the conference so that they can make it even bigger and better next year. Thank you.
And oh. Linda is coming back in. Were you going to say something, Sean Juan? Yeah, I think it was interesting, like, to me, the prompt to, like, notice how power is performed mm -hmm. made me, like, just notice, like, I don't know, like, the lecture format is, like, you know, there's inherently, like, a hierarchy in it that feels like it obstructs some level of interpersonal relationship. So I'm just curious, like, it feels like there's something there where, like, if you were to keep iterating on it, with yeah. the spec actors, like it could eventually turn into this more like conversational flow of like where you're like actually embodying some of the um like relationship mm -hmm. stuff that's being talked about, which could be interesting. But I don't know. That's just like my oh, loose read on like, it. Yeah, totally. It's like that would have happened actually if I didn't I didn't I abandoned the scientist. I was like, ah, <laughs> I don't want to be this anymore. <laughs> but if I really like carried it through like we could have been talking to Dr. Dorr right now but I, I that's too high level for me <laughs> at this I moment I was just like <laughs> oh no <laughs> enough um yeah it was kind of yeah hmm. is it an open door or a closed door that's right <laughs> that's right Dr. Dorr um yeah thank you so much everyone for participating in this and <laughs>